We've got to apologize for, for that delay in my banner, but we're on now. We're talking about miscarriage and what kind of uh, psychological help you uh, that you would need and that is available to you if you like so my guest this morning uh, dr linda vanutu is part of us here at multimedia okay no i'm kidding uh, she's a regional director of health service greater Accra region it's always a pleasure hosting her so good morning to you ma'am good morning my pleasure and mr etonam glende is regional mental health coordinator greater Accra region good morning to you etonam good morning sure uh, I'm just wondering, what's the connection between stillbirth or miscarriage and mental health? Um, you know, when we talk about mental health, it's not mainly about people who are on the streets or whatever. It's, it's any form of psychological disturbance. And anybody who suffers miscarriage or stillbirth uh, comes under a lot of psychological um, disturbances and needs some form of psychological help. Mm. Mental health is not just about mental illness, but any aspect of what psychological and psychological well-being so uh, it's a joy to partner in the maternal uh, issues of ghana so today sure. that is very, very i like the connection <laughs> uh, but dr linda vanotu how often uh, do we experience even in the greater Accra region alone mm -hmm. miscarriage thank you very much mama v and good morning to everyone watching and listening you know i'd first like to link the mental health to health you know that if you are defining health it's not just somebody who is not sick as you would say today i'm not feeling well and i've gone to the hospital no it's someone who is completely well and that includes being psychologically well so there are a lot of people who are not sick in the sense that they will not get up and go to the hospital. But I find that everything about them is not well. The way they eat, the way they sleep, the way they talk to people, the way they walk around. And I'm sure driving around you've seen a lot of them. Some of them you have to horn several times for them to move out of the way. So you find that in doing this, we are giving health in its totality. Miscarriage and stillbirth. You know, pregnancy lasts about 40 weeks and is divided into three trimesters. Sometimes people are pregnant within the first trimester. They are not even aware because some of them may see blood every month. And then one day finds that they are no more seeing their periods. They go to the hospital and they are told that you are pregnant. So through that, somebody may have a pregnancy and lose it or the pregnancy may be seen because you've gone to the hospital you are told you are pregnant but then it ends in the first trimester or sometimes the early part of the second trimester or even within the second trimester when this child could not have survived outside of the womb mm. so that one could be a miscarriage now if you are talking about a stillbirth the definitions vary, but for our purposes, let's just say that it is a child who could have survived outside the womb. And we take it from about 28 weeks onwards, okay. but is born dead without any sign of life. It means the child is not breathing and the heart is not beating. We have two forms. One is called fresh stillbirth. When this baby is born, you find that this baby was alive probably about 12 hours before it was born. And then we have the macerated. The macerated one, this baby died a little while before it was born. Yeah. And you see from the skin, it's as if hot water has been poured onto the skin. So you see the skin peeling and all that. This means that the baby died quite some time mm. ago more than 12 hours before this baby was delivered. And it happens quite often. In the greater Accra region, when we look through our statistics, you find that in a year, putting all this together, and the figures are scary, <laughs> we have over a thousand pregnancies that end that way. Over a thousand yes. in a year. 
Yes, so if you add those who were born fresh, stillbirth, or macerated, we put the two together, and it's a huge number in the greater Accra region. And that is why we need to do a lot about it, mm. not just on our part as service providers, but also for the families that suffer the stillbirth. And I like what is showing on your banner. <laughs> you know, it is the truth. And it is very painful that people go home and they are not sure, some of them are not sure what happened. Was it my fault? Could I have done something about it? And what is the help out there for me? Mm. And that is why we are here today. Mm. So um, ideally, if you go through such a process, maybe Atonam can help. What would be going through the mind of somebody like that? Um, there's possibly going to be some form of the level of depression, feeling of hopelessness and helplessness. Mm. So therefore, um, that person can, might not be able to handle that situation on his or her own. And therefore, we need the help of a professional, okay. prof a mental health professional to go through the griefing process of... You know, when you lose um, a relative, as a child or something, you, you go through a griefing process. And most of the time, most people need to be helped through this process. Mm. Other than that, it becomes a different problem in future. Yeah. In, in, your, in your profession, do you see that ordinary people would walk into your facility, for instance, and say that I have been through a process like that, I have lost my baby, and I need somebody to talk to, I need help? People walking in voluntarily is a bit on the low side because of the awareness mm. and the awareness of services available for such people. Um, but sometimes when it goes to the extreme, they are referred to the various mental health units for such help. And now with awareness programs going on, we yeah. believe that people will be able to walk in and say, I have been through this, I need this form of help. So I take it that what you see would usually be referrals? Yes, referrals. When it's gotten to yeah. like a... Uh, a worse stage, if you like. Yes. But okay. ordinarily, people would not, you know. Yeah. Like, I, I, can I walk in and say that I, I feel depressed? I want somebody to you talk to. You are always welcome. That is what we are encouraging. Okay, but do we do it? Very few people do it. Okay. Very few do it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Doc, what's the plan? Um, you want to yes. set up a facility where women and men who've gone through this can come and get some counseling? Yes. And we also want to use this opportunity to talk about some of the cultural things that prevent people from accessing such services. You know, I did some work where we interviewed people who had ever suffered stillbirth, women mostly. And we found that it's believed you don't have to grieve for more than two weeks. You don't have to cry for more than two weeks. Otherwise, your pregnancy will be delayed. You not have- When you've lost your own child. Yes. And almost all of them that we spoke to were not involved in preparing this child for burial. A few of them saw the babies. But one of them said, I wish I had seen this baby to put my mind to rest. Some of them thought that it was spiritual, that they were asked to do some things, perform some rites, and they didn't have the money to do it, and this is why it happened that way. Others said, they wish they knew what contributed to their stillbirth. Probably they could have done something about mm. it. And then others said that they wished that a pastor had been there when they were informed that they had their stillbirth. And if somebody delivers their stillbirth in the hospital, you hear other babies crying. Mm -hmm. You see mothers holding their babies. And if this woman, first of all, because she delivered, if she's not helped, this may affect her for the rest of her life. I've known people who, after stillbirth, decided they wouldn't have any more children. So we realize that there's the need to support people, help them through the griefing period, because they will. Some of them will deny. Some of them will even question God. Some of them may lose their faith in God. Mm. Some of them may blame their husbands, or the husbands may blame the wives. And it is not just the woman who delivered, but the husband or the partner, the grandparents on both sides, even siblings. If it happens that this woman has other children, they know that mommy is going to bring another baby home. The mother comes and she doesn't bring any child. That alone may cause trauma to her mm. 
apart from the fact that she has lost this because one. Because the other children will keep asking, where yes, is the baby? Where is the, the baby? baby? The other thing is that this woman wanted this child. So if you tell her that it doesn't matter, just forget about it and that you will have another child, it will not solve her problem. Let's say that you have three girls and you wanted a boy. You have a baby who is a boy, but it's a stillborn. You have children, yes, but this one was a child that, even if it was a girl, you still wanted that child. So it is not enough. That's why we are trying to set up this thing, a unit within our facility. First of all, we are starting in Adabraka Polyclinic, where we'll set up this unit and offer help so that people would not blame themselves they'll have opportunity to go through a process supported by a professional mm. and then move on because once you are grief you cannot stay at that level forever you have to put your life together and move on and sometimes it's not easy you will need the support of somebody who is trained to do this and that is why we are doing this but before we set up that unit, we'll give an opportunity to meet people. And that one will be a place where a lot of people could come. And you have access to counselors, you have access to pastors. You'll talk to them, they also talk to you. And we'll try and explain a little more in detail what is stillbirth, what can cause it, how can we prevent it, how can you be involved, how can we also be involved. So together, we work at reducing it. We are also hoping that out of this, just as we have support groups for people who live with one disease or the other, we'll have people who will be bold to support others. That probably I'm not going to have any more children because mm -hmm. I'm grown. But I had a stillbirth about 10 years or 5 years or whatever number of years ago. And I want to support this course. So I will be a counselor or I would be a support. Okay. So we'll have a network formed. We'll have, it, it's going to be not just for Ghana Health Service or for the Mental Health Authority, but all of us, including the community. It could even be a man. Maybe there's a man out there whose wife had a stillbirth many years ago and has still not overcome it. This is an opportunity. It's not just for women. It's not just for the mothers. It could be for siblings. It could be for grandparents. It could mm. be for anybody who is interested. Okay. And knowing more and also going through the process okay. of healing. Yes. So this is where you do a collaboration and then you set up this unit? Yes. Okay. So it a means very that, good one. It means that the, the mental health authority will have personnel at the facility as well. I tell them, how is it going to work on the ground? You see, with the passage of the new Mental Health Act, it talks about integration of mental health into general health care. Mm. So therefore, we are no longer running a parallel service of mental health separately from general health care. Mm. So every facility you go, you find mental health personnel working. So once this a unit or this center is in a health facility, we have our staff there who are going to be actively involved in this um, center. Okay. So as we speak, there is a very uh, big bond between the general health care and mental health services in Ghana. Okay. And that is what we're driving at. Mm -hmm. And then we also have people who are trained psychologists. And we have counselors as well trained. So it's going to be a multi-purpose something. It's not just going to be staff of mental health or staff of Ghana Health Service. It's going to be a mixture. Okay. Yes. Is this permanent or this is just yes. something that you're running for a little time and then you no, move no, on no, to another facility? No, it will not be facility. a little time, no. The, the meeting that is inviting everybody who is interested, that one is a one-off thing for now. But this unit that you are talking about in Adabraka Polyclinic is there. It's a permanent thing that is there. Okay. It's forming part of the services that we run. Mm. Yes. Okay. Is this going to be replicated in other parts of the region? Yes, we'll try to do that. We'll try to do that. Even now, as we speak, in the Ridge Hospital, we have a clinical psychologist there who talks to people who go through such situations. Okay. Yes. And we will do this, especially in the big facilities. But in faraway places, we could train some of our staff to be counselors. So that if it happens to anybody, let's say that somebody unfortunately has a stillbirth 
in the Ada area. That person may not be able to travel all the way to the metropolis. But if we have someone there who is trained, then that person can see mm. this woman and the family and talk to them. So we'll try and replicate it as much as we can, integrate mm. it into our service. Okay. Well, what's your hope? What do you want to achieve with this setup? My hope is that people would overcome a pain. They would be able to move on. They'll be able to get back to God if they have left him. And then also be able to support each other. My other hope is that through this, we as service providers will do everything that we can within our means to prevent stillbirth. As I said, some of them are fresh, which means that when the woman came, the baby was still alive. Or during the antenatal, we can train them and help them to identify when they have a challenge mm. so that they can come early. And when they come, we will be able to save these babies. Okay. The ones that are macerated, who were delivered after they had died for some time, even those ones, probably if they knew what complications could happen in pregnancy and they're able to pick them up and come early, we would be able to address mm. them. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, I have Mamie C. in Takwa who is asking a question. She says, I had an embryonic pregnancy. What may be the cause? So I guess these are some of the things that you would encourage. People can come up and, because usually we, we don't ask a lot of questions when we see the doctor. <laughs> you know, when something like this happens, some people will just uh, take the fact that, oh, you lost your baby and that's it. Would you encourage a lot of questions like what Mami is asking at yes, the will. place? On the, this meeting we're going to have, the open one, will be on the 12th of May. And that day will give opportunity to people to ask some questions. And as I said, we'll try to explain a little more in detail mm. some of the complications that can happen with pregnancy. You know, some of them, as soon as, especially for those who are newly married, if somebody marries new and is trying very hard to be pregnant, she becomes pregnant and maybe three months or so she loses that. Some of them think that that may affect their marriage or it is my fault or something else. Mm. So we'll try as much as possible to offer help. You know, some of them probably we couldn't have done anything about, but even that, still you need to put your life together. You need to go through the process because there is a griefing period you go through and there are stages mm. but it shouldn't end up in depression it must you be done with the grief and process before you try another pregnancy not necessarily people are different you know somebody can have a miscarriage or could have a stillbirth and said you know what i'm going to try again mm. and she would go for it of course with support from the husband another person would say that i'm not sure and when you read about people who have ever suffered stillbirth. There are some who suffer one, two, or even three, mm. but they turned it positively and supported others or supported themselves mm. and went through the process. Okay. So you could decide with your partner based on your own conviction that I want to do this. And it doesn't mean that probably you will ever forget this child. You may not. But at least when you remember, it will not push you down that you'll be depressed because this baby, you may remember that child and even, oh, if this child were here, he would be so many years old mm -hmm. now. And, and then just look at it in another way, you see, yeah. Mm. Okay, so is there a date uh, for, for the one that is general before the unit itself is properly established? Yes, there is a date. We are working together, mm. and we've selected the 12th of May. Okay. And it will be at the National Theatre. Theater. Okay. We'll start to be a short, we hope. But we also want to make it so that people will be happy they came. Okay. Yes, so we'll have it for two, three hours, depending on how it goes. Mm. But we will be ready to offer as much support as we can. Okay. We have counselors, as I said, who will be there. 
We have pastors who will be there. And we have people that when we finish with our presentations and questions and answers, you could talk to them. The mental health authority would also be there. Mm. So you have people that you can talk to. And then we can also take their records. If you want to see somebody afterwards, you could do that. Okay. If you want to visit the center that we are setting up in Adabraka, then you could do that. So it's a way of opening up. Okay. Yes. Sure. So finally, Etonam, what are your expectations as well? Uh, we look forward to having a very healthy, mentally healthy nation through uh, mothers. Mm -hmm. You know, um, she talked much about the family getting, uh, being affected. Most of the time, the children also, issues of psychological um, disorders affect a larger p a group of people. Mm -hmm. It's not only the person who is involved. Because um, if your wife is psychologically down, the husband is affected, the children are affected, the immediate family members are affected, her work colleagues are affected because there will be issues here and there. Mm. So therefore, when the issues are tackled head on from the source, that is when the mother is helped, mm. we expect that the other people will also be very healthy. Sure. We expect to have a lot of people coming in to feel free and ask questions. We also use the opportunity to talk briefly about the new mental health law that has been passed and mm. discuss the way forward the law and also make sure that people know the services available for mental health services in the region and the country as well. Mm. Is that, you know, like a, a phone number that people can call? Because, you know, sometimes when, when you feel down or depressed, you don't want to talk to a friend, you want to talk to a professional. Yeah. But you can't go all the way to the facility to go and talk to them. <laughs> so do you have like a phone number that people can call you and share their, okay. <laughs> their frustrations <laughs> with you? <laughs> for now, um, I'll put a number on, and when the, uh, the call comes, we'll direct the person to a professional. Okay. Uh, so you can give me that number. If people yeah. are interested, you can tell me. I'll pass it on to them. That's I think okay. that's what I'll yeah. do. <laughs> okay. But what it means is, when I feel depressed, I can call you. you yes. Anytime. Okay. Yeah. And, and even when the center <laughs> is set up, you can go there. Okay. If the, if the person who is there at that time cannot help you, as he said, will definitely link you up to someone mm. who would help you. Okay. It could be a doctor, it could be a trained clinical psychologist, it could be a mental health officer, it could be, in, it could be a pastor. So it depends on what you are looking for. Okay, that would be very helpful to some of us. <laughs> because you know, sometimes you don't want to talk to the next human being, because yeah. they could go spread yeah. what you've told them. Yeah. But if you know that you're dealing with a professional, professional you, you know, you're rest assured, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we look forward to 12th of May at what time? 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Yes. at the National people, Theatre. Yes. Okay. Where the gift shop the is. The Exhibition Hall of the National Theatre. Ah, yes. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So the campaign is on. If you know anybody who has suffered a miscarriage or stillbirth, they, they got or pregnant but they didn't get their the child. Wife. Or if a man lost the wife, mm. you know, through pregnancy, you're also welcome. Okay. Or if a, a child or a grandparent, mm. anybody, yeah. Okay, uh, so this is a forum for every person, either you've been affected or you're related to somebody who's been affected. Uh, at the National Theatre on the 12th of May at 9 a.m., uh, let's go and have a fruitful conversation and let's all come up with ways that can help all of us. You never know, you could be in that situation uh, tomorrow. This is something that you can never, ever predict. Uh, but I thank you for your time here today. We'll have this conversation again, uh, hopefully before the 12th of May. Sure. All right. Uh, so Dr. Linda Vanuto is Regional Director of Health Service with the Greater Accra Region and Etonam Glender is Regional Mental Health Coordinator, Greater Accra Region. He says, by the way, you can call him when you feel depressed. <laughs> All right. Stay with us. Today is also uh, Intellectual Property Day. Uh, we hear very little about it here in our country. Uh, sometimes we, we have our own personal piece of artwork, either your creative work, and sometimes you hold it so close to your chest because you know that once you share it, somebody <laughs> will steal your idea. So how do you own it? On this day, there's a, a lot of education on that. Fortunately for us, we've got uh, some personnel from the Attorney General's Department joining us uh, with a lot more on Intellectual Property Day. Stay with us. This is the AM Show. <laughs>